Hello and uh, welcome to ePlan Tips and Tricks. I'm um, just going to do a quick one today about moving items in the 3D world of ePlan Pro Panel. So you can see I've got my panel up on here. I'm looking at the full enclosure set and I need to make a few changes to the back plate or to the mounting panel. So there's a few ways you can do this one. Some people hide the door, some people go and activate the actual mounting panel itself. Uh, today I will activate the mounting panel. So just simply double clicking on, on the mounting panel gets you a green activation code in the corner. You can just see it just there. And that shows that this section is now manually selected for change. All right, so I'm going to have to move some items out of the way. Um, in particular, I'm thinking about some clearances to here. So if I go to view and mounting clearances, I can see whoever designed this to start with has left some uh, pretty terrible spacing against the, um, the actual inverter drives themselves. So I'm going to have to move some of this trunking up and then change some of the length on here. So to initiate a move, it's actually quite easy. Uh, you simply right click on the item you want and select on move. But before I do that, I'm just going to show you some of the options just up on here. So there's an option of snap to grid, object snap and design mode. Snapping to grid, when we activate something, you can bring a grid up and we'll see that in a second. You can object snap as in you get little red, little red corners onto your mouse to know that you've snapped to a particular edge. And design mode allows you to choose where you move something from and to. So by right clicking and selecting move, you can see the grid activates itself in place. The snap to grid you can now see is the, the little red section on here. And design mode is now saying, please select the starting point of your move. So I can choose something that, that's going to make sense to here. So I see if I choose this bottom left corner, I'm, I'm going to move from that bottom left corner and I can start to put this in place. Whilst I'm doing this, to stop any errors happening again, what I'm going to turn on is something called collision check. This now doesn't allow anything to be placed where there might be a collision. It's quite a simple thing to do. So I move it upwards. I can see it's now in a, in, in a position where it's not going to collide. I click it in place and I now have my trunking where it needs to be. I need to extend this actual trunking now. So by clicking on here, I can then also call change length. So I click on change length. I select the item that I want to change the length of. I make sure it goes in place. Again, you can see the collision check is working for me on here. I put it in place and now I am set. Okay, so now I've made some extra space on here. I can start to move some of these items around as well. So by having this very up close to this sort of trunking, may, it may not be the best idea. So I may want to use a little bit of space that I've got on here. So if I select a set of items on here, you can see I'm selecting from left to right, which means I'm only going to choose the items that I encompass. I can then right click and move. I can then choose the point where I'm actually moving it from. So I'm going to choose the right hand side and then move it across. I can right click, use a placement option. I can say I want an offset of minus 10 millimeters from the right hand side. I click it in place and I now know I have a 10 mil gaff. So again, these are just some of the few little tips and tricks to help you get your items in place, keeping them in the right place. Or if you need to make some quick changes, you'll be able to make them, well, quickly. Thanks for your time.